Hi, it's Lael from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I've got something exciting to show you. If you have bought the new pastiche stamp from IOD and the uh, pocket theory stamp, then stay tuned and I'm going to show you what I did with mine. Okay, my box arrived from IOD and they have very kindly sent me um, lots of goodies to try out. So today I'm going to be using the new pastiche stamp, pastiche, and I will show you what it looks like. It is lots of kind of cloches and cages and things that can go under them like butterflies and birds and all sorts of really um, nice things. I, I think maybe it's better if I kind of show you from the front. So this is stamp number one. So basically all of these go in here. Or oh, they don't have to, but that's where they're going. So that's stamp one. And this is stamp two. And they also very kindly sent me a set of the new Apocryphy labels. And I'll show you these two. I've been very spoiled. So I'll see if I can put these in a white background so that might help you. So this one's just sort of the fronts of um, the labels. And so is this one. This one's a kind of a more ornate, I haven't got my glasses on, a more ornate sort of fancy one um letters so typeset and typeset so those four little um packets because they're all little packets all fit into and uh, are in the apocryphy label set so what am i doing today now you're probably thinking because this video is for iod i wasn't going to labor all of the paintwork so basically this was a piece of orange and this was the color it was orange mid-century modern furniture why have i picked this piece because this little thin drawer at the top I quite liked it kind of reminded me of a sort of millinery sort of a little bit more modern than that and it had these on this drawer and this drawer i've got martin to remove these i'll be putting different handles on it further down the line i'm keeping the, this one and this one on and this one on and i'm not quite sure how we're how that's all going to play out as we go now you're probably wondering i've painted a beautiful color of blue which is half and half i'm just damn green and the other half um is the new frida blue from annie sloan just half and half and it's made this beautiful color so but what i've done is i've added um a white and an olive color to get this sort of clouding effect now i'll be stamping on it and then painting back around it the blue but I wanted a sort of dirtyish kind of whitey surface to stamp on does that make sense I think it does so before I can use any of the stamps I am going to um if you've never used any IOD products before well stamp you pull off this um piece here and the best way I mean I do one or two things sometimes I just pull them off because I want to bend them around things but I'm going to keep these ones on the backing for today and you just cut them out I'll show you one cut out and then you can um I'll show you this every time but it's glasses um so you just cut round making sure you don't cut the stamp that's always a, a helpful thing and it helps if you kind of round out your edges because this plastic can be quite sharp so I just like to do this only because you don't want to be poked with anything sharp right so that that's how you cut them out and then what I what what you have to do then is take a piece of fine grit sandpaper I'm making a mess already Martin are you filming my absolute mess he is filming my absolute mess um Find it sandpaper and you just sand it. Now, what I do is I tend to go sort of diagonally down it and then this way, the other way diagonally, up and down. And this has been well used so that I know that I'm not, you know, destroying my stamp. Don't use anything too heavy. And then just kind of do this way, just so that it's just got a little bit of tooth. It just helps either your ink or your paint, whatever you're going to apply. Now you can apply IOD stamps with ink 
I would uh, I already have the own ink um, or you can apply them with paint. Um, it depends what, what sort of look you're looking for. But today I'm going to be painting, um, I'm going to be stamping with black ink. So I'm going to get away. I'm going to, because I'm not going to watch you enjoy you doing all this. I'm going to go away and I'm going to cut all my stamps out, sit them in a pile. All my big things on one pile and all the little things that are going to go in the centre in another pile. And then we are going to start stamping our furniture. And uh, I'll be... Obviously, the way it's going to work is, so say I was using the butterfly, I'll stamp the butterfly first, we'll paint the butterfly, and then we'll come back over with the ornate cage over the top of that, so that it looks like it's suspended in it. That's the, the way to go with this. So I'm just going to go cut all these out, sand them back in a minute. Okay, so, so I know where I'm going to be putting my one that's going to be underneath. I'm using the masks as a sort of rough guide. So um, down here, I'm just going to stamp my stamp whilst holding on here at the same time. I'm going to be quite ambidextrous. And I'm going to be doing stamp it, paint it, stamp it. So I'm thinking about here. I'm going to move that. So I'm going to paint these images in. Um, but it was just so that I have an idea of where I'm going to be painting, you know, because I want to paint it first and then stamp over the top with my ornate cage. So there's my first stamp. And if I do this, I can see that that's where it's going to be. Now, what's a size? This is all going to be about sizing, really. So the next one, I think I want to pick one that doesn't have, it's not a cage, it's more of a cloche. So I want to have an idea of like, so this is my size for this. I want to kind of, now with them, you could have them kind of like, you can put whatever position you want because with the mounts you can, you can stamp one and then put the mount over the top of it and then come back and do something like that if you wanted a sort of more kind of 3D effect. But I, I don't think I do. I think I just want to have something quite like they're all in a line. So taking that, I'm just going to quickly sort of hold here and stamp here. Um, yes, I would mask and tape it on or get a little bit of tacky spray. But the problem is I can't find my, my mask and tape right there. So I've got this all nice and stamped. And I'm just going to be just so I know roughly my sort of size I am going to push on the beetle first and obviously with this one I can just paint the beetle straight in I don't have to worry about um, uh, going over the top of the cage because this one's open now you could run over this with gold paint and have your um, have your um, like your cages for example you could have them done in gold or you could use a bronze paint or you could use a silvery grey paint for this but I'm gonna go for this sort of black and white because all my sort of colour is going to come from what's in everything so right so like this I just want to make sure that I've touched every surface right okay so the next one I think I'm going to go with this one, I think. But what do I want to put in it? Um, I think I might. Let's see, because there's quite a lot of choice. I mean, you can have the books. I think I might have the clock in this one. No, I don't think I will. What about some books? Yeah. So I need to find the mount for this one, which is this one here. But you understand what I'm doing. I'm only going to go along to the end of here just now because um, I'll have this one a bit lower. No, I'll have this one a bit higher. No, I'll have this one about here, I think. But I want to have the books in it. So let's just kind of roughly sort of decide where the books are going to be. I mean, this isn't that tricky. You just have to do a little bit of thinking before you, you kind of do anything about it. That's all. I'm just going to flip this back. 
and pop my little books in here. Remove that. I'm going to work all the way along to here with my either my whole cloche with something in it or um, just the centre part and then we'll talk about painting them in. So I'm just going to, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see me do the next one because the next one I'm going to do one of the cloches I think with the eggs in it. Ta-da. Now, uh, there's a couple with eggs. There's one with the egg already in it and there's a small one with one egg. Let me just go back to what this one looks like just so I can see what they're all going to look like sitting beside. Uh, and this one? Yeah, because I'll put a tall one in next. Yeah, one more and then I'll stamp to the end of the row and then I'll come back while well, I'll set up for the paint and museum. And the good thing with this one is I don't have to work out what's behind it. But I will, just for the sake of argument, pop that back over the top of there just so I'm, I'm clear on my sort of positioning. So, it's a beautiful stamp. Um, I really like this one when I saw um, the new release. I thought, oh, I like this one. So, and I think it's going to be quite, I mean, although it looks very pale just now, we'll put some colour in it and we'll make it, make it pop. So, I'll get on and do this just now. So now all I'm doing is I'm just painting in, um, just with sort of colours. I mean, there's no point point painting where it's really dark because that's the shadow where the stamp is. But I'm just kind of putting some some colour into my um, butterflies. So I've used a sort of, I'm using the same sort of colours all the way through. So let's try and add a little bit of maybe some yellow. And I'm just using a small artist brush. Um, just a liner, just to kind of line that out. I might just pop a little bit of yellow, but I'm not sure what that will kind of end up like when it's stamped. And maybe one last colour on this. Maybe a little bit of this blue. Um, just run some blue along here. Um, just remember the kind of reasonable amount of symmetry when you're doing a butterfly. Um, just to make sure that it's kind of kind of there and thereabouts. Right, so what I'm going to do though is I have a gold Posca pen. I am going to just run some, a bit of gold in this as well. I don't want to do too much right now because it's not dry, but uh, just run a little bit of gold in it before I stamp it. It might not have much effect, but it just kind of adds a little bit of something, I think. Right, so that's all I'm going to do in the butterfly just now. I'll give that a minute and we'll stamp it. But while that's drying, I'll paint in the beetle. So for the beetle, I've got some green and some sort of turquoises just to kind of make it a wee bit iridescent. Let's just see how this is going to be when it's a bit dark. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing and um, kind of, I think I might add some sort of yellows into it as well and just kind of um, alternate my sort of colours. As I said, where there's an awful lot of black in your stamping, you know that that's, that's the shadow in the stamp. You're not going to get anything really from that. So that's the thing about kind of when you're painting and stamping. But um, I'm going to do the legs anyway, even though that I know that they're going to be over with black. I think with this kind of thing, I think it really helps if you've got the right size of brush. Um, I think this is a number one. Yeah, a number one liner. Just something like that. I quite like this sort of section in the middle here. And that was kind of done with some yellow. I'll put a little bit more yellow into it um, at the top. Um, now, let's just see if the I'll put a little bit more of the dark green on the big red. Just 
I think this is probably good to go for the stamping over the top of it, so I'll just find my butterfly. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Martin's doing the usual, trying to be kind of jumping amongst the paint. Uh, I've re-stamped my butterfly and you're just going to try your best to line it all back up and then you're going to go back over the top of that just to kind of finish it off. And really, this is the steps for every single one when you're doing the underneath. So this is an underneath one, an underneath one, an underneath one. Um, I did a little sort of kind of put the little cup on the stand and did a little egg at the end there. I thought that was, I don't know why, I felt kind of pleased with myself. But So there, that's, that's what that looks like. So now you can actually go ahead and you can get your big stamp and it can go over the top. I'm just going to go away and ink this and uh, be back in a minute. Okay, so my cage has been inked and I just want to make sure my positioning is good and I've got it right up to here. Now with all stamping, it's good if you have one hand that holds it flat and one that moves around making sure that every surface is touched because um, if you've ever gone back in it's not an easy thing to do you know to try and fix and do another little bit of stamping over the top Um can be done but it's good if you could just get it right the first time around and then you don't have any ghost in or so I'm making sure that I've touched the little legs the feet down here over across my butterfly so I think you're getting the idea of what I'm actually trying to do here. I'm just going to work my way. Now, let's have a wee look. Okay, so that's one done. Don't need to do much with this. I just need to go back over with my full stamp because I just kept the beetle in it. Um, just find it. There we are. So you just need to re-stamp the inside of this. So I'll just get it inked up. And let's go over the top of this. Make sure that I'm pressing down everywhere with this. So I'm going to repeat this process all the way to the end. Now just using the same sort of colour palette. Just something that will make this pop and then I mean I put the browns and the creams underneath here so that when I because I do want to kind of come back around here with the dark colors but I do want to have the uh, pocketry label stamps beside it you know like a kind of like here and here and here so we kind of I just decided to do it all and I kind of like this sort of brown edge that I did here with the um, with the olive colour so we'll try not to eradicate so much of that when we get to that stage so uh, I think my paint is still a little bit wet there I might have to go back over that in a minute because you can see can you see that there you don't want to be painting and stamping on things that are damp so I'll come back to that one so I'll just carry on all the way along here okay so I've done the stamping all the way along and now I am just putting in my blue back in my bluey green so i'm just kind of getting it as close as i can with a bigger brush and then i'm just coming in with a thin brush i don't i'm not going to take it right up to the edge i i don't want to lose this definition but i'll probably take it as as close as this so um i'm going to go on and do this now I mean, I could have did it different ways, but I thought I, I wanted to kind of blend and I thought the only way I can do this is kind of just run across it and it didn't take very long. So, um, but you could stamp it, paint it cream and then do everything. You wouldn't have to do all this underneath it. But as I said, it didn't take very long. So I'm just going to do this. And I think it's going to give me quite a nice effect because I'm going to add some of that um olive paint back in at the bottom just to kind of make it look like this I'm not going to take it as far I'm not going to take the blue all the way down I'm probably going to stop about sort of here um so that it looks like it's got a sort of background on it okay 
Okay, so these two sets of drawers are done. I'll need to touch up in there with my blue from where I put my, my white. Now, I just off camera um, put a dark shadow around here and put a sort of lighter colour here just to kind of distress it all. There are going to be um, the, the stamps, the apocryphy stamps somewhere here, but I was waiting until I got the whole thing sort of done first. I'm unsure whether I'm going to just make a whole row of them up here and keep here quite clean or whether, but I'm kind of working out as we go. I forgot to say at the beginning, but um, this mould here and the moulds that have gone around here, there's the rope mould and this mould are from Trimmings 2. And this corner mould is from, um, yeah, you tell me Classical my elements. Classical Elements. Martin always knows that one, right? So that's what I've done just to kind of, because it was obviously, it was a flat, plain piece of furniture. So the second pass of the sort of cages and cloches, I have taken the beetle out of this one, sat him to the side because I'm going to put this little bird um, behind here, like he's hanging up inside here. So that's going to go on there. I've taken the two eggs out of this one and I'm going to put these sort of flowers in this one, which just goes in no more. So these are going to go here. Um, so let's just start with this one here. Now I'm going to have to just kind of, I'm using the actual stamp as the positioning for this while I just pop my bird underneath and see what's what. Um, yeah, I just need to sort of, yeah, if I line that up with this draw here, I'm going to get and this point up with here. Right, so I'm just going to stamp it and let's just carry on. So really it's just... It's just mixing and matching your um, stamps. It's a lovely set and there's lots and lots and lots of scope for lots, lots of different things you could do with it. So I'm thinking that was quite bold and not kind of using my um, my mask there, but I, I thought I would just wing it. Ha <laughs> ha, did you get it? It's a, it's a bird. <laughs> yeah, all right. Humor, no. So... Put my wee bird on here, and this is one obviously that I can because it's got not got the wire and it's not a cage and it's a cloche. I'm putting the wee bird in, I can paint through it. So there's my little bird. This is the one that's going to go over the top, so I'll just stamp it up. So, really, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing, it's just that it's just so you know what I'm, I'm doing. Um, now, a funky angle, so I just want to get this right. I think I'm kind of happy with that. Remember, once you've got it down, you kind of have to commit to the process. You can't just go, well, I'm not quite sure. You just have to go for it. And if it isn't right, well, you can just paint it out and start again. That's the thing. I mean, none of this life-threatening. I think it's about just putting them together in a, a, in a sort, of, sort of position that pleases you um, and I think that's that's okay so I'll just check that that so there's my little bird in my little cloche and I'll get once I've done along this line I'll get Matt to come in and give you a really good close-up um, of where I'm at now the same is going to be having to be done with this one so let's just kind of sit this down here to give me a sort of rough idea I'm just winging it now. Let's just let's just hope for the best there. <laughs> I think I could maybe have been down a little bit over, but we shall see. The next one I'm going to do will be the this cage. and this is my stamp Stamped. I think this is the good thing about the stamps they're very kind of forgiving almost 
um, if you want to, as I said in the beginning, if you want to put them over the top of each other and have more of a sort of foreground, background, middle ground kind of thing, then use your masks to position them. But I was, I was thinking mine would look quite good, like a row, like they were on some sort of shelf. Um, maybe you want to buy an entomologist or something. Um, making up a whole story for it now. Um, there we go. So I'm just going to work my way along now. The next one, I'll just give you an idea of what I'm going to do. I think the next one, because I'm really having fun with this now, is I think I might put, there's quite a large flower. I'm wondering, let me see if that's, yeah, I think I can just get that in and no more. Actually, no, I'll move that. I'll have a, because I've got a flower there. I think in this one, I'll put the clock. So that's how that one's going to look on that. But remember, you have to stamp your clock first and you put your, um, your ornate cage over the top. So I'm just going to get on and I'm just going to work my way along this edge. Then I'll come back when we go up paint these in and then I'll come back again when I do the blue. Okay, so I've done this part and now we're just going to go along it all and do the stamping over the top. Um, I just used the same sort of kind of colour palette. I didn't go, oh, no, I'm at a really funny angle, so I'm hoping that I don't mess this up. Just really need the bard in his legs. And next we have the flowers. Sorry, man. Sorry. Step back a wee bit just so I can get it. I, I thought I might not even go back over and re-stamp this the flowers here because they were quite nice, but I think I've kind of went off shot the mark there a bit. Clock next. I had them all lined up so that I could show you. I mean, you could just go on for an ever in a day with all the different options. Clock. And we need to put its cloche on. And this part next. I mean, you could use all different coloured inks as well if you wanted to. Marty, were you breathing in there in case I didn't get that straight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. We have got a history. <laughs> now, make sure that I've got that all. Let's start. I think I've embraced. Your strategy <laughs> over the years of it doesn't matter. See if this happens because obviously this is like this here, and if the ink touches up against it and it leaves this, just get your little palette, um, which mine's is here, and a brush, and I've got some white here. Just eradicate that, and then just rub it into your hands. You might have to go over it a couple of times. But then you can just get rid of that. I mean, don't don't panic. It's not it's not ruined or anything. There's no there's no big shakes about it. I've got the wrong kind of brush, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. Next, we've got our egg, but I just need to put ink on the egg because I don't need to go over the whole thing. And the next one is going to be the ferns. And then there's going to be a cage, an ornamental cage over the ferns. Egg. What did I do with the ferns? Oh, okay, my system's gone 
gone on here, had everything organised. Um, where are the ferns gone? Here they are. Um, ferns. And this would look really quite good if you went over it with white ink on the green. Just a thought. Ferns. And the last thing I have to do is my bird nest. Again, so organised. I need to put the... This is very black on this side because I stamped it the wrong way down before. <laughs> Who hasn't done that before? <laughs> right, okay. Bird nest and last but not least. Now this is slightly too tall for the space. That was why I had to take these long handles out of here and here because I really planned it out that I wanted it that way, so um, it's just slightly too tall, so let's see if we can, uh oh, hang on a minute, it's been leaning in some green paint, just get a cloth here. There's always a, there's always a bit of something, now my fingers are not green. Try that again, without the green paint. Now, I think I thought I would happily sacrifice a bit of the top and a wee bit of the bottom. Not a bad angle. So I thought I'll miss out this part here. If you come to a part like this, you can always take it off the mount and do it, but I wasn't. all pieces of your stamp, make sure it's all touched. And there we go. Could have done a little bit dark here now. I'm going to be doing something cheeky, but as I said to you before, it's not a good idea to do it. Just it wasn't very clear. There we go. Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is the same thing as I did before. Is I'm going to fill in my blue, yeah, and then I'm going to put my shadow around the edges. I'm going to be gold leafing all these details here. And the next thing we'll get to it is we'll open up the little set of um, a pocket grey stamps and we'll start stamping up here so that we can go around that and make it look like labels. I had made up my mind. I thought, well, either going to be having them on here or up on here. But I think it'll look really cool because this floor is thinner. I think that's a good way to go. So round with the blue, in with the shadow in, onto the top drawer. So now I've opened up the apocryphy labels. I've got these three here that I'm not, I'm leaving alone just now. And I've cut up this set. It's quite orny. Um, this is how this set looks. So, and I can, uh, obviously, I can see there's a join here as well, which means it can make it look like separate drawers. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to do, be doing the same sort of idea of painting the blue background in, and I'll be doing all of the outlines in these of gold. So let's get the first one on. And I'm just literally going to add a whole set of sort of labels to this top drawer. Um, and then we'll, once I've painted them in, we'll come back and we'll stamp them all with some words. Maybe just some numbers, I don't know. We'll see. See how we go. So making sure that I touch the whole thing. And I've got round all the edges. And that's the first one. And now I'm going to use this little thin strip to just do me a 
It's a shame I maybe I should have done better positioning. I think what I'll do is I'll put some more on first. So I'm going to do two of these on top of each other on the next part. Remembering that I want to separate them all out, so giving myself a little bit of room to manoeuvre. Um, I think we can safely say I've got enough ink on my fingers now as well. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to do with this set. I'm not going to open the other set. I want to keep this one because I like, I, I mean, I like all of them, but I like this set. This set goes with, I think, kind of what I've got going on in the front. And this is another a really cute little sort of um, really good stamp set. I can imagine, I'm always looking for um, fonts this size, which means that, you know, look after them, right? And, you know, you can get all your fonts and things as well, which is a really good one. Um, yeah, next one. I'm hoping I can get two of this one in as well, but I don't think I will. I think I'm only going to be able to get one. So you get the gist. I'm going to go all the way along here. I'm going to do the external where there's kind of fancy like this. I'm going to do gold. I'm going to and I'm going to leave the inside white. I might even whiten it up a little bit more before I stamp it again. Um, and then I'm going to do my blue around my edges and then we'll come back and we'll put a lettering into it. But just so you can see what I mean about the little strip. I'm just going to do... this and this is quite awkward because the way you have to cut it out it's just a little thin piece of plastic on here yeah whoops it's not exactly straight is it <laughs> whoops i think it's because it's hmm. oh well you know maybe it's supposed to be like that <laughs> do you see what i just did there it to be like that. Actually, do you know what? I think it is not very straight on the thing, so that's okay. We're living our best lives here. I'm just going to do this all the way along. Um, you're not going to miss any more. I'm just going to um, stamp all the stamp all the um, uh, stamps. I'm wondering whether we can maybe get two of this one that says Newbury. Yeah, I might be able to Let's see. Newbury, eh? Newbury, uh huh. Yeah. Just down the road from my manor. That <laughs> was only wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping maybe not. Maybe I'll have to do one of these and maybe a sort of thinner one on top. But you you get I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way along with all these stamps until I've done and then do the gold, paint in the blue, put a little bit of extra white in it and then we'll get back to stamping some words on these. Okay, I'm now just stamping over the top of the um, stamps. I did the white, I did the gold round it and I did the blue in between like I did on the drawers. And now I'm just coming back in with the black and I'm just putting the detail back into um, the labels. And I'm just going to go around them. Um, I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to show you the ones that I've, that I've got here. This is this one. The next one I'll do is this one because that one is the one for here. But I'm just it's just it's just to get then now give them definition. Um, like this. And let's take, I've got this the right way up. I think it's that way. And all I'm going to do is go along all of these, doing exactly the same thing. And then we'll get to putting some lettering in them. And then we're going to get, put, put, start putting the gold in moulds here. I've already kind of done some on the bottom part, but I'll show you that. 
and then I think I might restamp and maybe put some the flowers. There's some flowers that I might kind of tape off and just use some of them for the tops of the taller ones. I think that might look quite nice. Um, so I'm just going to go around all my stamps and do this at the top. So I, I only picked a piece of the rose, this, just this part here, to stamp onto here. And when you're doing the stamping with the ink, if you just kind of, just, you know, just kind of pick out the part and just rub it across it, um, that way you can, um, and then I just pretty much, let me just get this positioning right. It was just to put on top of these. I, th I thought it could do with something a little bit more. Something. <laughs> so I've done one here and on the other side I just flipped flipped it around because it, it's got a sort of natural sort of curve that kind of fits the curve of the, the ornate cage. Um, like that. And I'll just do that again for the other side. Um, and I just did it this way. To make sure I've got it kind of right. I'm just I'm not using a mask or anything. I'm just aiming the ink on where I want it on the stamp. The more you stamp, the kind of more you kind of just rely on just kind of your eye. Um, right. Okay. So that's that side done now too. And what am I going to do next is I'm just going to show you this gold that I have here. This is just my gold gilding acrylic. And I am just, I'll start over here, Matt, and we'll film way easier. And all I'm going to do now is I'm literally just going to bring in all the detail of the moulds. And I told you what moulds these were, and I put these on, and I let these, I put them onto the bare furniture, not on the painted surface. And I, um, let them dry until they were hard before I painted them so that they weren't soft. I've got a lot of videos on IOD mold, so if you want to check out other videos on my channel, feel free to do so. So, so I've got my drawer ready to stamp now and I'm going back to the Apocryphy label packets and in the packets there's a couple of, or two of them that have fonts. So I am using, um, I'm confused what I'm using. I'm using this one here. So what, <laughs> so what I've got is I have started to, um, this one's going to say linen, but obviously I need to repinch my end and put it on the end. And this one's going to say cotton. And I've done one down here that says silk. So I'm going to stamp these into here and I'll show you one. And then yeah, I think you'll get the sort of idea of what it is I'm trying to do. It's just to finish this off. I'll push the drawer in so I don't have any disasters. Making sure I've touched it all. So I'm gonna go along now. I'll try I'll show you the other font as well. I'll just cut this out here just in case I make a I'm just using the top sheet to line them up on and then I think I'm going to put them all, keep them in here from now on so that I, when I go back to my fonts they're all there. I'm usually quite good with fonts but um, I get panicky if I can't find a letter. This one here is going to say linen so I'm going to have to move it slightly over the label a bit because I need to fit my N in again so let's just do something like this. And I'm just going to go across these into silk, linen, cotton and um, finish up because the next thing we are about to do is, or I'm about to do it, is I'm going to seal this piece. I'm just going to take my E and my I and my L off, set them down there so I don't lose them, re-stamp my N, come back in with my N there. 
so that that says linen. And I think it just gives it an extra something. I'm going to do these drawers. Now, we discussed this before. This one's got a handle. This one's got a handle. I had to take the handle off of here for this one. This one's got a handle. This one hasn't got a handle. So I rooted through my drawers to find something that I could make work. And I found a bee, a, a solitary bee on its own, and a solitary cricket. What I'm actually going to do with both of these is, I think you can guess, is I'm going to get my gold and I'm going to paint them both gold. And then they are just going to go randomly into whatever drawer, probably here and maybe here, um, so that these drawers can still be opened. Um, it was a kind of strange way to do it, but I was looking for something kind of a little bit juxtaposed, a little bit different. There's a shocker. I couldn't just go mainstream there. So that's what I'm going to do with these. I'm just going to make sure that these are all nice and burnished with my gold. And when I seal my piece, I'll run over with some sealer with these as well. I'll be sealing this piece today with French Chic Tough Coat Top Coat Sealer. Um, and where is the Cricut? Um, I think it just kind of goes with the sort of theme that I've got going on. I don't know why, just do. So that is it. I'm just going to stamp my drawers and seal my piece. And then we'll get it over for some staging. And I think that when these are put onto the furniture as well, they're going to give it another bit of wowy interest, a little bit of difference, which is always good. Okay. So it's done. Um, if you're considering buying um, from the new spring collection from IOD, then the pastiche stamp is very handy. It's got lots of nice elements, lots of things you can mix, mix and match. And obviously it's got... Um, it's got, it's got the, with having the addition this year, I think of the smaller font, I think that's good for people who do furniture or small. So it's quite a good addition to have. Um, was this tricky to do? No, not, not difficult at all. Just remember if you're putting the cages on to do your stamping first before you put your cages over the top. Uh, you can stamp with um, gold paint, make your cages gold. Um, that's today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'd like to thank IOD for very kindly letting me play around with their products. I'm very grateful. And Martin and I will see you next week, won't we, lovely Martin? We will. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.